Now on the hind limb, it's a, it's a little bit more complicated, but um, a similar, similar type of arrangement. So we start out with uh, what stabilizes the upper part of the limb, and we have the gluteal muscles and the biceps femoris and the semitendinous, which are these bands that come off the spinal column to the uh, caudal end of the pelvis. And then from that, these bands run down to the distal end of the femur, the largest bone in the horse's body, and the proximal end of the tibia. And then opposing that, we have the extensor fascia latae, which comes down and inserts onto the patella. It's a, a thin uh, tendinous strap. And then we have the vastus and the rectus muscles coming off the cranial part of the femur to the patella. And then opposing the pull of those, we have three really important ligaments that anchor the patella in its position on the distal end of the femur. We have the lateral, the median, and the medial ligaments of the patella. The medial ligament is a really important ligament that we need to be aware of because that's the ligament that locks over a prominence on the distal end of the femur and allows the horse to truly stand relaxed on a hind limb. And of course, we've all seen horses stand with one hind limb completely relaxed and the load is on the other one. The horse, whenever that happens, the horse needs no muscle tension to hold its, its limb in position. The patella has been lifted up and moved over a prominence on the distal end of the femur and this uh, medial ligament is hooked over that prominence so now this joint is locked. Whenever this joint is locked, this one is locked and this one is locked. And that happens by parallel straps that come down on the cranial and the caudal face originating on the distal end of the femur and then passing over the hock to insert onto various points on the distal end of the limb. So we'll start out with the uh, strap on the cranial face, and that's the peroneus tertius. It originates on distal lateral face of the femur, passes over the tibia, and inserts onto the proximal uh, uh, dorsal face of MT3, or the cannon bone of the hind limb. And then opposing that, we have the gastrocnemius, which originates on the distal caudal face of the femur and runs down and it gives that shape to the back part of the gaskin of the horse's limb and then inserts onto the point of the hock or the calcanus. And alongside it, we have the uh, terminus of the superficial flexor muscle, which comes down and makes its first insertion point onto the point of the hock which makes it quite different to the front limb in that the superficial flexor tendon of the forelimb makes its first insertion point way down here. On the hind limb, it makes its first insertion point up here. So we have these parallel straps, insertions here and insertion there. And then from here down, of course, we have the superficial flexor, the deep flexor, um, the uh, uh, check ligament, if there is one of the deep flexor, the subtarsal check ligament, and of course the suspensory ligament. And then the remaining uh, portion of the hind limb on the distal end is the same as the front limb. We have the uh, uh, extensors, the flexors, um, the check ligament, the suspensory ligament, and then all the small associated ligaments of the fetlock joint, and then the distal joints to hold this part of the ligament position. So the hind limb is different from the front limb in that this part here truly does lock. And in some cases, a horse will have a, a disease or a conformation that will cause this to lock when it shouldn't. So that's the patella is locking when it should. So a fixated patella or gonitis is the technical term for the disease. So we call this the reciprocal apparatus because these joints work in unison. You can't flex the fetlock without flexing the hock and the stifle. So that's why we call it the reciprocal apparatus. On the forelimb, you can flex the uh, fetlock without flexing the knee or without flexing the elbow. And then the 
uh, locking mechanism is the stay apparatus and on the front limb we don't truly have a locking mechanism but very slight tension in the muscles uh, holding the scapula in position and then in combination with the biceps brachii and the lacertus fibrosus will hold the remainder of the leg in position. So that covers the stay apparatus and the reciprocal apparatus of the horse's limbs.